What's up guys, it's Teppo here. Today we're gonna go hang out with a new friend of mine, Matthew van der Poot. He is from Belgium, but lives here in Australia like I do. So a European who's fled over from the cold winter and come to summer in Australia. I'm gonna teach you guys today about time lapses. Well, actually, I'm not gonna teach you. Matthew's gonna teach you because he's a boss at time lapses. Go and check out his Instagram. It has some amazing hyperlapses, time lapses. Stay tuned, we're gonna go meet him up soon in the middle of Sydney, and we're gonna have a day with him and learn about time lapses. All right guys, bike downtown. Quickest 20 minutes of my life. So sweaty now, it's all worth it. Now, I gotta go find Matthew. It's like playing Where's Waldo, but where's Matthew? I don't know if it's Matthew or Matthew, like the French way, but we're gonna go find him. It's Matthew. Spotted him before he spotted me. Where's Hello. Matthew? It's here. Is it Matthew or Matthew? Uh, it's funny that you say that because everyone in Belgium calls me Matthew, like you said it. Because the French way, right? No one here has ever called me that. I'm uh, European. Call me Matt. It's I know easy. it. Matt, <laughs> nice to meet you. Tip number one when shooting a time lapse, you gotta make sure that all your settings are on manual. So I'm talking ISO, white balance, aperture, and shutter speed. This way, you're in control as opposed to the camera. When the camera is trying to decide for you, it might result in flickering, which is the last thing you want in a time lapse. Tip number two, if you're gonna shoot a time lapse, you're probably shooting it on a tripod. Now, if your lens or your camera has image stabilization built in and it's static, this means that it's gonna look for a focus and it's actually gonna create motion blur. So turn off all image stabilization to make sure you get the sharpest photos. Tip number three, if you're gonna shoot a time lapse, make sure that your camera is set to shooting raw photos. A raw photo as opposed to a compressed JPEG gives you way much more room for post-processing and you can actually add so much quality to the images when you're shooting raw as opposed to JPEG. Tip number four, ND filters. A time lapse with motion blur is always better than a time lapse without motion blur. So make sure you always have an ND filter in your bag so you can extend your exposure or drag the shutter, which results in more beautiful looking footage. Tip number five, intervals. On average, I like to shoot, when I'm shooting people, I like to shoot at an interval that is about one to two seconds. When you're shooting clouds, again, on average, probably about three seconds. And when you're shooting like a sunset or a sunrise, where you're shooting for quite a long time, you don't want to end up with thousands of photos. So that's when I like to shoot between five and 10 seconds as an interval. Just finished hanging out with Matthew, super cool guy. We just walked around the city doing time lapses and just talked and got to know each other. Totally one of the cool things about Instagram and YouTube is that you can meet totally random people in the middle of the city and just make new friends. So if you wanna go check out Matthew's work below, I'm gonna put the YouTube link there. Also check out his Instagram. And if you like this video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel so you keep up to date with the newest videos coming out. Peace out.